Hi, everyone. <laughs> so welcome to the fifth Ulrich virtual program that accompanies the Ulrich Artists and You Community Billboard Project. I'm Leslie Brothers, director of the Ulrich Museum of Art, and I'm here with Jana Irwin, our head of education, and, and Ksenia Erstein, our curator of modern and contemporary art. We have a wonderful program for you this evening, presenting Gajin Fujita from Los Angeles. The billboard featuring Gajin's work is located at 1500 North Broadway. I hope that all of you have had a chance to see the 15 billboards currently on view around the city. If you haven't, you can find them in a slideshow on our website under current exhibitions. You'll also find a map with locations, a link to the portal where all the works featured so far are identified and described, information on the Smartify app, and Jed Bodwin's curated playlist on Spotify. And these are intended to enhance your billboard viewing experience. We thank all of our individual sponsors. I know that there are a number of you out there. Thank you so much, um, our individual sponsors of the project. And all of you are now listed on the website on that same page. We thank our lead sponsors, Mike and Dee Michaelis and Emprise Bank. And we received funding from two granting organizations, the Kansas Creative Arts Industries Commission, which awarded us funding from the National Endowment for the Arts and Humanities Kansas. And we wanna just shout out to the LA Louver Gallery participants. Thanks for being here uh, this evening. And now it's my great pleasure to pass the screen to Ksenia Gerstein, who will introduce our guest this evening. All right. Thanks, Lee. Um, hi, everyone. It's nice to see you, or to at least know that you're somewhere out there in the ether. Um, like Leslie said, my name is Ksenia Gerstein. I'm the curator of modern and contemporary art at the Ulrich, and I'm going to introduce Gajin Fujita, and then we'll finally get to the really fun stuff. Um, so uh, Gajin was born and raised in Los Angeles, where he still lives today. And more specifically for anyone in the audience who's familiar with the geography of LA, which is a vast metropolis, which contains multitudes and cities, with, cities within cities. Uh, Gajin uh, hails from the historically immigrant neighborhood of Boyle Heights in East LA. He came to art through an interest in graffiti and membership as a teenager in a graffiti crew. And he later went on to receive a BFA degree from the Otis College of Art and Design and an MF University of Nevada. Since the 1990s, his work has been widely shown and collected both in the US and internationally. And his work can be found in the collections of the Hammer Museum and the LA County Museum of Art in LA as well as the Kemper Museum of Contemporary Art in Kansas City, uh, Toledo Museum of Art, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and of course, the piece at the Ulrich, which is what you can see on the billboard at 15th and Broadway. Um, Gajin's work is notable for its complex pairing of references and uh, visuals that connect, you know, otherwise really disparate and different cultures in exciting and enlightening new ways. His most notable influence are Japanese visual culture, as it was defined in the 18th and 19th centuries by Yukioa woodblock prints, um, combined with contemporary American popular culture, especially as that culture is defined by sports fandom. Um, the visual language of graffiti and tagging also remains a major component in Gajin's work, which kind of ties all of these pieces together as I'm sure we'll see and hear about shortly. So tonight, we're really excited to have Gajin join us and tell us more about his journey and interest as an artist. Uh, just in terms of logistics, he'll talk for about um, 40, 45, at which point we'll open up the webinar for a Q&A. And I would 
would encourage you to use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. There's a little um, icon you can press on and type in your questions, which I will read out loud and pass on to Gajin, who will be able to answer them. So I think it will be a great presentation and conversation. And with that, I will um, disappear and Gajin will appear and start talking. Hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, thanks, Ksenia. Thanks, Leslie. And thanks, Jana, um, for having me and, and remembering my old piece at the Ulrich. Um, and I'm so grateful for all of you that, that have joined tonight. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all the people out in Wichita, Kansas. Um, uh, the Ulrich will always uh, have a special uh, place in my heart uh, for you guys have uh, collected one of these paintings, and um, I'm 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 grateful that I, I've been able to share, and and the Ulrich been able to share this painting um, to all the people out in Kansas and Wichita. Um, I guess we're gonna start tonight um, with a little background of uh, how I came to be a, um, a artist in LA. Um, I was born and raised here in LA um, and uh, particularly in Boyle Heights, uh, blue collar neighborhood, um, very close to downtown. Um, uh, first got glimpse of graffiti uh, being written all over my mother's uh, ha mother's house. Not not the house um, literally, but the walls that that surrounded my my mom's house and where I grew up. Um, and so that was my first sort of visual experience into graffiti there, there there've been a lot of uh graffiti from gang graffiti to hip hop graffiti um but mostly when i was growing up it was it was uh, a lot of uh gang graffiti uh from the neighborhood um and then i i serious i i really got into graffiti more seriously when i um stepped up into middle school, which was like 1984. Um, and uh, I had to take a bus uh, to traverse and cross from east to west um, to a magnet school called the LA LACES, which was in mid city of LA. And uh, that's when I saw um, and was affected um, when I encountered hip hop in its sort of infancy, as well as um, on the school bus ride over to, to school from the east side to the west side, um, I would see a lot of graffiti in a lot of different neighborhoods. Um, and so there was a, a cornucopia of visual um, information um, before I even got to school. So uh, that was how I was kind of introduced to graph. And then um, while I was in middle school there at Laces, uh, I, I joined a band of graf uh, graffiti, other graffiti artists. And my first graffiti crew was the K KGBs, which stands for Kids Gone Bad. Um, and that was like 85, 86. Um, we were all dancing, um, listening to rap music, um, and doing graffiti. Uh, and uh, soon after that, I, I, I um, started taking the, the Metro, which we called the, which was the RTD. Um, and uh, on the RTD, I would tag, inscribe 
in the back of the bus and even on the outside of the buses and the whole it was like a game we all played all the graffiti artists back then there was only a handful of us not like now we would paint on the outside of the like spray paint and tag with markers on the outside of the buses to see who can get up the most and who, who can be seen the most uh, that was whole, our the whole objective to tagging um, was to be recognized and to be all city. And so uh, that was sort of the beginning of my graffiti, uh, involved in graffiti uh, scene here in LA. Um, afterwards, um, high school, I went to Fairfax High, which is in West Hollywood. Um, and I, I was able to also get into a magnet program there uh, at Fairfax, which was a, a visual arts magnet program and uh, kept me in tune with, with the arts. And um, shortly after, um, there was a, a, a lull um, in practicing art. Uh, it was around 90, I think 1990, 91, um, when I began um, junior college at East LA College, community college, uh, to study some more art, some um, uh, studio classes there, painting, drawing, and some art history classes. And uh, fortunately, there were some uh, great professors that are looking out for um, myself and a couple friends of mine um, that encouraged us to uh, go study um, and go uh, to some some of the um, uh, very um, prestigious art colleges that we have in here in Southern California. Um, and so I naturally, you know, there's a art center in Pasadena, there's Cal Arts out in uh, Valencia and Otis, which at the time when I was, what was, it was like 93 when I applied to Otis, um, it was still here in downtown. Um, and I chose Otis because it was more fine arts oriented as well. It was like, an old art college in the city. Uh, it was really super close to downtown. I mean, pretty much in downtown, or was in downtown, right next to MacArthur Park, right off of Wilshire and Park View. And, um, you know, uh, it was great. I, I, I had a, um, you know, uh, a good experience there. Uh, but it doesn't mean that I liked it. Um, you know, I think I had a hard time in my freshman year, which was like boot camp. I, you know, when I when I went to college, to Otis, I, I wanted to like start painting immediately. Um, I didn't realize that they were gonna uh, freshman year they were gonna send you through all kinds of different courses, and it was pretty rigorous. Um, but at the end. Um, there was a, a great professor uh, there who's a, a, a dear friend of mine, um, Scott Greiger, who was looking out for me um, and was my, my sophomore painting professor, but he kept an eye out for me. Um, and uh, we developed a bond there and uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for Scott. Um, and uh, when I graduated after obtaining my BFA, um, he asked if I wanted to continue painting and what I was gonna do um, in, out in the real world. And he uh, gave me a proposition and said that I could uh, go visit, you know, maybe go visit and meet a, a friend of his uh, Dave Hickey, who is um, uh, an art critic, art historian, 
uh, of contemporary arts here in here in the United States. And um, luckily, and uh, I, I took the opportunity um, to go to graduate school. It was a uh, it was a full ride, and I got to meet Dave Hickey out in Las Vegas. And so I did my graduate studies out in UNLV, out in Vegas for three years and um, really got to uh, enjoy the, the lectures of Dave Hickey. And um, there were some profound things that I've got from Dave, which still stays to, with me and in my mind, um, probably most likely all the way throughout my career and my life. Um, so um, uh, now, and now I can call Dave Hickey um, a mentor and an art coach. It was, uh, it was a great experience and that was sort of the beginning of my career, uh, thanks to Dave. Um, I guess I was like one of his star players if we had, if he had been coaching a basketball team. And um, he, he uh, got my career and got my work to be recognized uh, to the world when he uh, had me participate in one of his inaugural or his only uh, curatorial debut in, in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico uh, for a biennial at Site Santa Fe. And uh, it, was it was from there, um, I, uh, you know, stepped foot in the real world, in the commercial art world, or the art world, I should say, and started working with a gallery out in New York City, um, and then came to, came to work with uh, Peter Golds of LA Louver, and uh, here we are right now. Um, I've been working with Peter um, for nearly 20 years now, and um, it was from the first show, uh, my first solo show at LA Louver, that the Ulrich had acquired uh, this painting, uh, K2S crew that you see up on the billboard. And, and thank you, thank you, Ulrich, for putting up my work on, on one of the billboards. Uh, that means a lot to me, thank you. Um, so I guess we can get started on, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm planning on showing you uh, 10 works uh, 10 paintings uh, tonight. And we'll start off with the K2S crew painting that the Ulrich had acquired back way back when <laughs> in 2002, I, I, I think. And um, uh, this is a, a painting that uh, I was inspired by um, from a from a reference that I that I have, it's it's a it's a woodblock print, an ukiyo-e woodblock print, and this is a the actual um, copy that uh, Kabuki calen a classic drama calendar that my mom had, and it was like one of the first pages to the calendar, and um, uh, it is a it's a woodblock print done by Utagawa Toyukuni the third. Um, but yeah, it was simply, a, the reference was simply off of a, a calendar. It's, a, it's crazy. Um, and uh, I, you know, with this, I, I tried to, uh, and with all my paintings, I, I, I try to uh, give it a, add and appropriate um, Los Angeles twists and graffiti um, to the image. Uh, 
And so um, you can see in uh, the K2S crew piece, uh, the, the character in the middle of the composition um, is, is dressed in a um, samurai attire with uh, more contemporary uh, American sports team, uh, which is the Raiders. Um, I love the Raiders. I, I grew up watching the Raiders, um, you know, and I always have an affinity for the Raiders because they were like the, the bad boys of the league. And um, also they, they won the Super Bowl in 1982 as the Los Angeles Raiders. Um, it's unfortunate they had to move to Las Vegas now, but uh, so, you know, here in this painting, um, you may not be able to see, uh, I've also tried to add more, um, uh, like, different appropriations um, in some of the um, characters, there's like uh, partial tattoos, tattooing, you, you can see um, that I painted on their, on their skin. Um, and that comes from studying uh, Japanese tattoos, Japanese traditional tattoos, who uh, also the tattooists or the tattoo artists uh, they use a lot of reference um, from the ukiyo-e woodblock prints, uh, mainly from the Edo period, uh, how Ksenia had uh, described the, their, um, mostly from the Edo period, which is um, 18th century, 19th century uh, artists and designers. Um, so maybe we can move on to uh, Motel. Could I, could I jump in very quickly? Do you mind speaking to the title of the of the piece, K Two S Crew? I'm really oh, curious. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, so the K Two S Crew is another crew that I have um, ties with, and as you said, a membership. I, I don't think. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm a member of uh, this crew called K2S. Uh, it's an old LA, one of the first um, major uh, LA graffiti crews and the acronyms stand for Kill to Succeed. And so uh, as soon as I saw this, it, this reference image of the calendar, of uh, Toyo Kuni the Third's image here, I thought about my crew and um, you know this this woodblock print that Toyo Kuni the Third did was uh, was an impression of a uh, Kabuki play that he must have seen in the 19th century, and um, it's it's a play of Chushinguda, which is uh, like the 47 Ronins. Um, and Chushinguda is, is something that I grew up with, um, the tales from Chushinguda. It's a, it's a real, it's a, it's a real non-fictional uh, tale that's in the history of Japan. Um, and you probably have seen movies of it. Uh, I think uh, Keanu Reeves did a contemporary version of it uh, where he starred uh, in this movie called 47 Ronins, I think. And um, it's exactly like that tale. Um, and it's, it's crazy because if you go to Japan, uh, I think it's in Tokyo, I believe, uh, the, the graves of these 47 Ronins who gave up their lives uh, to take revenge for their master are are still there and you can see it to, uh, you can visit the graves of, of these uh, Ronins. Um, and I, th I think that, that that's super deep and awesome. Um, but, you know, I, 
I thought of my crew immediately or um, when I saw this because um, uh, graffiti we, we may we may be not like samurais and, and so rigid but we're and we're a little clandestine but um, you know I, I feel like um, all the all the members to a graffiti crew and what we do our acts are somewhat like ronins and samurais and ninjas you know we, we um and we we band up um we're we're so united we we have like this brotherhood and um it's like a a, a, a fraternity and there's so much camaraderie between us and that's what i thought of when i saw the toyokuni uh, woodblock print and um i thought i'd give a nod to to my crew and so uh the characters um that that i painted um i feel like are, are um, crew members i can't tell you specifically who's who but um I just felt it was like a good group uh, photo, a, a group image um, of what, how I would like for the crew to be per portrayed as well as um, how, how a graffiti artists should be portrayed. You know? So that's the story behind uh, K2S Group. Oh, and um, uh, there's a quite an interesting anecdote that I have to share um, kind of full uh, with that's um, related to this painting at the Ulrich. Um, I have a real cool friend who's now a neighbor of mine, literally like a neighbor of mine here in Echo Park. And um, uh, my friend Landon Taylor, he was uh, a student about 10 years ago. I think he graduated from Wichita State. And uh, I think he was an art major there. And um, so it was like uh, six years ago, I think. Um, or no, I'm sorry, like four years ago, like 2016. and um my friend Landon um I met at, at an art opening in Culver City uh, uh this show called Aftermath um and I had no idea who Landon was I just saw him in the crowd and this guy was like staring at me and looking at me he wasn't like mad dogging me or anything but I was like it was so bizarre and peculiar. Um, I know I have fans out there, but this guy was um, like, I can feel the vibes, like his eyes just following me from across the gallery. And um, sure enough, he finally got the goal. I guess he was really hesitant and shy of approaching me uh, to say that he was a great fan of my work. But he finally got the gall to approach me and 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 introduce himself to me, and so he introduces himself to me and he says he's Landon Taylor, um, and he's from Kansas, and that he went to Wichita State, and that you know his uh, that he's a huge fan of my work, and he had studied my painting, the K2S crew piece, in the Ulrich museum um, for many a days uh, he had even gone during off hours because uh, I guess he knew somebody at the that worked the security or something and uh, they would let him in and he would go there um, when nobody was in the museum and he would uh, spend hours sketching this painting and he even showed me his sketches he has his sketches to this day and um, that was like super touching um, and so uh, 
and now he, you know, we're good friends and I had no idea. It was like a, a serendipitous meeting and um, it's amazing how um, you don't know uh, to the, the different degrees of how people recognize you and your work. Um, and I just, I just thought I'd share that with you all because I think it's such a, a great story. Anyways, um, gonna move on here. Um, this is a painting called Motel. And this is my first ever uh, prototypical painting uh, in this sort of fashion style where I've been able to put together uh, uh, um, the layers um, of the woodblock print imagery as well as graffiti and the gilding of the gold. Um, and so this painting was made while I was still um, a student at UNLV in 1998. Um, it's a diptych, which is uh, 16 inches by 49 inches altogether. And it's my first, very first painting. Um, and my uh, very first painting that I also had sold in, in the commercial art world. Um, and now it belongs to, I was fortunate enough to get it back in a trade. And um, I, I had since then given, it, given this painting to my dear friend and my, my mentor, Scott Greiger, and it sits in his bedroom to this day um, in Venice. And uh, yeah, I, I was, you know, when I came up with this painting, I was sit, you know, uh, sitting in my studio out in Vegas, um, thinking about some, some of the profound words that uh, um, Dave Hickey had given in his speeches and in his classes. And one of them, uh, he mentioned that art should violate people's expectations. So that stuck in my mind. That was one of those phrases that Dave threw out there. And, um, you know, that one kind of caught me off guard and, and slapped me in my face. And uh, I, I thought about for a long time in my studio. And, um, you know, I knew I had this graffiti component that I had been working on for a long time, but how can I mix it? Uh, um, you know, during Otis, I, I had um, um, gotten into more uh, the ukiyo-e woodblock prints. Um, I mean, I was fortunate that my parents were in the arts. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, my father came out from, um, I'm born to uh, uh, Japanese immigrant parents uh, that came out here in 1970 to LA and my dad wanted to study painting in, in at of all places at Otis College of Art and Design. Um, so that was like full circle too when I graduated Otis in 97. But anyways, uh, my mother also conserved um, Asian antiquities, mostly from Japan. Um, so I got to see uh, her, her practice, um, Urushi lacquer, uh, lacquer wear. So she st restored uh, lacquer, things that were lacquered. Um, as well, there was, I, I was fortunate to grow up with a bunch of woodblock prints in the house. Um, so that was sort of my first introduction. But at Otis, um, you know, I took Asian art history and um, I, I came across, reconnected with uh, woodblock prints. And uh, it was from there, I was trying to kind of um, create a duality 
between not only cultures, but uh, high and low art, uh, as well as um, East, West, uh, um, and different times as well. Um, you know, Edo period to contemporary times. And, um, and trying to see if I could get a cool mixture, a fusion, and duality of um, these images. So I came up with Motel. Um, I thought it would be uh, provocative to use um, an erotic image. And it, it, uh, it seemed to have worked out for me. Anyways, um, we're gonna have to move on here. Um, this image is called uh, this painting is called Gold State Warriors and is from 2002. It's one of my my um, largest paintings to the to this date. And um, um, oh, I thought I had a reference uh, a book to it. I don't. Um, but it was it was from my first solo show ever at. Uh, in LA at LA Louvre and uh, this painting is um, five feet tall um, by 16 feet in length so it's it's almost like a mural um, and it's one of my first big big paintings it's comprised of 12 individual panels that I had put together and the paneling, um, I was influenced and referenced uh, by uh, the Asian partition screens. I, I, I thought, well, it might be pretty cool to paint my own sort of partition screens that were, were gilded. And, um, uh, you know, that, that was also another sort of critical point of uh, evolution uh, into thinking of um, violating people's expectations. I, I got the gilding um, uh, just viewing these partition screens um, and uh, sliding doors that are in castles of Japan and um, you know, I just thought they were so stunning, stunningly beautiful. Um, and uh, it was on a trip, a family trip to Japan back in 1987 uh, that I went to Kyoto and I came across uh, the Golden Pavilion, the King Kakuji in Kyoto. Um, it's a pavilion that they, that they made that sits uh, like in a, uh, near a pond or like in a pond and it's all gilded, it's all gold. And I just thought, dang, it would be super violating had someone went there and tagged the thing. Um, but, you know, I wasn't gonna go there and try to be, be ostracized or banished from Japan. <laughs> um, and so I thought of just creating my own panels uh, that I can gild myself and I can do whatever the hell I want with it since they're my gold, gold gilded panels. Um, and that's where the, the gilding came from. So anyways, this is uh, Gold State Warriors um, and which is uh, expressing my affinity and my love of my golden state that I was born and raised in. Um, and uh, again, I, I, I was trying to fuse um, my experience and what I, would, what I thought was cool, uh, having to grow up in Cal Southern California and in LA and, um, you know, I thought it would be cool to, to paint uh, images of these samurais uh, that I think are, are 
or super warriors um, in a uh, LA setting with full of graffiti and full of violation. Um, and the um, warriors, I also, I couldn't help think of like uh, some, some movies uh, and uh, the one movie that comes into my mind is uh, The Warriors, uh, the New York City uh, movie. I forgot who the director was, but um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a movie that a lot of us hip hop um, participants um, have a love for, I think. Um, and if you hadn't seen it, go check it out. <laughs> Uh, the next next painting here is uh, called Ride or Die, and this painting actually had been collected by the Kemper Museum. So there's another painting out in Kansas, or I should say Kansas City, Missouri, uh, not necessarily in Kansas, but uh, it's near Kansas State, um, and. It's also another big sort of tour de force painting of my career. Um, and this is a painting I painted in 2005. Um, it sits seven feet tall by 10 and a half feet in length. And um, I actually have a reference uh, or a book where I reference the, the woodblock print from. And it's this book of samurais by uh, Clive Sinclair. And it was from here that uh, I took the image and appropriated the scene. Anyways, um, here I'm. I'm really still, uh, it gives me the chills to, to see this painting. And um, I, I just love this painting because it, uh, the, the graffiti done in the background is, it looks so chaotic. And I have some dear friends who are um, legends in the LA graffiti scene. Um, one is Prime K2, from K2S. Uh, he did like a throw up on the right side of uh, the painting. It's uh, green fill in with red outline right above the dye font or the dye uh, text. And then to the left side, you see uh, in white fill in with blue outline, um, it's, it's a throw up by Whisk, another all city legendary um, graffiti uh, artist. And, you know, Whisk is from a, a rival crew of the K2S's and, um, you know, it's a friendly rivalry. So we, we all knew each other. Um, and so I was able to ask these guys to, you know, ask Whisk to come by and, and do his, his iconic throw up on my painting. Um, yeah, Jin, if I, if I may jump in, just because we're getting close to the Q&A and we have had one question come in that actually asks exactly about what you're talking about, the graffiti. So I was, if it's okay, I'll just, I'll go ahead and ask it. So there was somebody, uh, Donald, hi Donald, um, asking about the graffiti process um, and kind of, the technical side of it. Are certain paints more conducive to the process? Do you use templates? Is the background painted first? I guess, how do these paintings happen? Sure. Yeah, um, so um, for instance, here in Ride or Die, um, the process will be or was uh, the gilding of the panels. So it's a, it's, it, you know, I start off with wood panels that I gild um, with gold leaf in the background. And sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll use 
uh, different uh, sort of textile patterns, patterning with the gold gilding. Um, but this is, and then comes the graffiti. So I'll, I'll, I've been fortunate, I've had great um, graffiti friends uh, in my community here and and they're all, you know, I, I always ask their permission, and so they they're all so willing to come out and tag do their tags on on, on my paintings. So they'll sort of deface the gold uh, gilding uh, gilded surface. And uh, in the beginning, some of them were like afraid to to hit it with the spray paint or marker because they saw that it was so profoundly beautiful. The gilding. Um, I guess it's like, uh, um, what was that movie, uh, the Tarantino movie? Um, dang it. Um, anyways, yeah, when, when, you know, Sam Jackson opens up the, the suitcase of... Uh, Pulp Fiction? What's that? Pulp Fiction? Pulp Fiction, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the title of such a cult classic. Um, <laughs> Anyways, in Pulp Fiction, there's a scene where, um, uh, uh, dang, John Travolta and Sam, Sam Jackson, they like open the suitcase and, and, and they don't show what's in the suitcase, but it's, you can kind of, you can kind of make up and, and see that it's like bars of gold probably. And they're all like in awe. So I think that's what the, the graffiti, my friends, my uh, graffiti friends had felt first when they first tried to like deface or tag on on the gilding, and then um, so after that, after I collect a bunch of tags and throw ups and whatnot, um, I I make stencils, uh, drawings f first, and then make stencils out of my drawings uh, to get to paint the characters and, and layer uh, on top of all the graffiti with my own sort of uh, text and characters. So what you see in the foreground over the, the tags and the graffiti is uh, all stenciled um, work. And that's, and and it's a part of it's uh the process of of uh, layering uh, what i do seems appropriate like as an allusion to the ukoa process too right because they're prints so it's kind of the modern day analog to creating woodblock prints it's yeah i think you hit it right on the nail um i do i sometimes feel like a, a wood carver um, I can I can probably say that they the the people who were carving out the wood blocks were probably a lot more patient than I was and a lot more skilled. Um, uh, but the process of and you know they're using inks while I'm using paint and um, also I'm I'm trying to you know. Uh, in my process of painting, uh, I'm trying to expand um, and further uh, see how how much I can take uh, painting to a, a different level, or how I can use the paint and utilize this uh, medium, and and to see how it can be used, not just by like spray painting um but uh really sort of um pressing and uh um sort of uh exploring the different uses and how how, how we can use uh, spray paint um, mm. also when i'm stenciling so related to that there's another great question from eileen wang and she says first of all that she's a really big fan of your work and then she says, would you... Hi, Eileen. I know who she is. <laughs> uh, she says, would you tell us about one of the paintings in your studio that we see on your screen and how has your practice evolved 
um, into the present compared to when you did um, K2S crew? Um, well, first of all, thank you, Eileen, for joining. Um, I think she's in Kansas too, right? Uh, anyways, um, yes, the, the process hasn't changed all that much, but as from, from 2002 uh, to now, I think I've been sort of uh, trying to, technically trying to uh, see how, mu how much further can I utilize uh, the spray paint medium. And so, uh, in my more recent works, which I'll be showing um, a little later in this in this presentation, um, I think Jenna can probably bring him up. If yeah, there we go. There's some work from 2016, 2017. There we yeah. go. And so, like th for instance, this was a a painting I did in this year earlier this year, um, sort of right when the pandemic started, I was near completion of this painting, but um, I've been using uh, more, well, this is a, a self-portrait, um, sort of, um, I, I would like to call it like a quasi self-portrait because it's not, like really a representational of myself, but more a silhouette of myself. So I've uh, kind of gone off of what I'd been normally doing in the studio and used uh, the gilding on, on the sort of uh, more later uh, layering uh, in the process of making this painting. Um, so I've gilded um, my silhouette inside my, I filled my, my silhouette with the gilding of this uh, textile pattern of waves or water rippling. Um, but some people can see that. Uh, some more younger people have asked me that that looks like the Wi-Fi icon. Um, <laughs> Which is cool. I think it makes it, it gives it a great twist. It makes it more contemporary, but I was going to get to um, the different practices that I've been uh, uh, using in my techniques is like, for instance, uh, the paintings back in 2002, like in the K2S crew piece, I would um, always outline the characters always outline the graffiti that's in the foreground. Um, and for this image, I had um, painted without the outlining. So um, it, it looks more illustrative or like an illustration. Mm -hmm. And because um, the woodblock prints that I reference always have an outline. Um, or even like the tattoo, the tattoos that I um, have looked at uh, are always outlined. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, you know, instead of using outline, I've uh, began to use the spray paint. And because the spray paint sprays such fine mist, I can get great gradations. So um, I started using shading and shadowing. Um, and also since 2002, uh, the spray paint manufacturers, and there's some great spray paint manu uh, makers out there, especially from Europe. Um, I use a brand called Belt and Molotov from Germany. Um, which I feel is the best uh, spray paint out there right now. Um, but they've, they've come out with um, new colors, um, 
you know, you have close to like 300 plus colors of spray paint out there. So it's, it's crazy. Um, but I, I've been using more colors, uh, different tones, and I've been using shading, uh, for instance, like on the, on the, on the pole uh, to the stop sign. Um, there's no outline. It's, it's strictly shading and uh, um, trying to make these uh, images more um, representational. And so, is that true of the work behind you as well? Are those pieces in progress? Um, so this, the painting behind me, the big painting, was done in 2015. And um, no, th this painting is done. Uh, it's a painting called um, Demon Slayer. Uh, it's it's one of the few paintings that I've been able to to keep. Um, and this one has a lot of outlining. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking of, of uh, rendering and shading um, at this point in 2015. Um, and then, but this painting, um, which is called We Shall Rise, is also a, a finished piece. And it's, it images two um, phoenixes, um, which I referenced from um, textile, Japanese textile patterns, old, old Edo period textile patterns, and the phoenixes from, and um, it looks 2D, but um, uh, I tried to use shading um, as much as possible in in the in this piece, and so um, there mostly it's it's no outline on on the characters as well as the clouds in the background. Um, so, um, and I'm 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 just super excited about this piece. And it looks beautiful. And we have somebody, we have somebody commenting that it looks gorgeous there's a little bit of glare so i think we're not getting like the full Lovely. the full richness of it but it just looks like like such a jeweled surface oh thank you thank you um but the other, i was what i was trying to get to with this the spray cans or the spray paint there's um the these spray paint makers make a transparent spray can mm. Um, there's transparent colors now, so I've been using a lot of transparent black um, in this painting. For instance, like here, um, in the body of the phoenix, there's I use the black uh, transparent spray paint. Um, so does that allow you to kind of do work differently because you can get more nuance and sh shade? Um, Yes, I, I have to get, I have to work def differently in it, in it, and it's, it's super meticulous, especially on a small painting like this. Um, I have to go back into my stencils, so um, I'll reuse uh, my stencil multiple times, uh, just so that I, because I got to first um, fill in with the color and then hit it with the um, the transparent black to create that shadow or uh, shaded uh, illusion. Yeah. So I've been kind of trying to practice um, this this more illusional um, effect in my pieces, uh, and that's I think a major sort of. Um, change in how I practice uh, or it's like an evolution I think and you know I feel like these spray paints are like such game changers uh, I, and um, I feel you know uh, in order to sort of study more and impress um, how I can um, uh, challenge myself 
into to uh, using the spray paint uh, much differently. It's kind of like a challenge uh, of the medium. Um, so, and then there's a there's there's one slight change um, as far as like the graffiti goes. I, I've been like in the K2S crew piece back in 2002, uh, there was a, a, um, a more distinct uh, graffiti piece in the foreground. Mm -hmm. um, now I've been sort of exploring and thinking about, um, once again, uh, provoking the viewers, um, by the way, this is the reference to, sorry, I couldn't find the book um, where, I, where I got the reference from, but this is the, the woodblock print uh, that I used for this painting called hashtag WTF uh, 2020. Um, but as you can see in the foreground there, I've, I, was, I was talking about thinking of graffiti and how it can be uh, provoking and uh, violating, mm -hmm. I, I started to kind of tag, tag over um, what I've painted um, with the characters and the imagery um, uh, to uh, provoke more, more violation mm -hmm. and um, I just feel that that's just part of graffiti, uh, and that's how I had I had sort of been raised uh, to to see um, uh, graffiti uh, in LA, because uh, you know a lot of times um, some of some of the graffiti that I had done had not lasted like a day. You know, uh, they'll get either buffed by the city or um, somebody else, some other tagger will go over it. Um, there, there was an unwritten rule amongst this graffiti artists that you leave a, a painting alone if it looks really nice, you know, but it's always, it's, always, it's, it's never the case. There's, there's <laughs> always got to be a, 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 a troublemaker out there and, you know, but we're, we're all part of it. And, um, um yeah yeah it's something that that we all still i think graffiti artists have a hard time grasping but you know you, you, we also have to know that you know it's, it comes with the territory you're 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 it's, it's like a public display and you're gonna be critiqued from the streets you know, it's <laughs> anything goes you know? anything goes on the streets you know um yeah. Well, actually, so we have, I think we have time for like a couple of quick questions. So there's somebody, uh, there's an, an anonymous attendee who was asking a question kind of exactly about that. He was saying, uh, or she, I, I don't know, um, that people associate graffiti with crime or with gangs. So are you, in your work, are you trying to change that thinking or... Um, uh, yeah, what's your relationship in terms of thinking about graffiti that's now transferred to canvas and is in the gallery space? Um, well, you know, um, initially my thought was, um, again, the violation of expectations. So I was trying to bring the streets onto my surfaces and that's why I had my friends and, and um, in, from my graffiti community to come over and tag on it. Uh, so do they still do that in the more recent works? Yes I do um, but you know people people may um, yeah people are you know um, they can think whatever they want of it um, if, if, if they feel you know, um, I had been able to bring graffiti into the gallery setting. That, that's cool with me too. Um, 
Uh, I'm just glad that, uh, that I can make um, art lovers appreciate graffiti um, and, and bring to light that graffiti is a form of art. And it, it, I think it's a, it's a real pure form of art because, you know, um, being in the art world for 20 plus years, uh, when I was doing graffiti out in the streets, it was for the pure love of art, you know, and it was pure, it was the pure love of uh, trying to get recognized. Um, and we were doing it for free, you know, we were risking our, our, our sort of freedom and lives at times uh, to sort of beautify the streets in the city. Um, so I think, uh, I don't know, I think I may, may have gone off the question a little bit, but. No, no, and there's actually, so I'll ask the last question and then um, I wanna be respectful of everybody's time, but um, there, so Linda Duke, who I think works with Eileen, um, so as she says, you've mentioned violations several times. San Francisco based performance artist Joe Good once said beauty is always transgressive. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, I, I would have to agree. Um, you know, sometimes you find like graffiti, sometimes you find beauty in like un, in the unlikely of places, you know. Um, I mean, I, I found, I have been able to find beauty through, through my eyes, uh, the graffiti that had been painted on my mom's walls, you know, uh, or my garage walls. Um, and now I look back and I, I wish I had taken photos of some of the, the gang graffiti. Um, there's, there's definitely an aesthetics there's, uh, to it all. And, and there's definitely, um, you have to have skills, you know, it's just, it's not about, it's just not about, um, well, you, let me just put it this way. I guess you can kind of recognize who's skilled and who's not, or who's starting off and who's like been doing it a long time. Cause you could, just see the beauty in their their lettering and their um, their style and aesthetics. There's an aesthetics behind um, whoever has the skills to to put up a nice word or their name. Um, and to outsiders, they they may think, you know, gosh, we'll have to see this again, you know. But um, there's I think there's there, uh, beauty lies in like the unlikeliest places. I think so. Yes, I I, I agree. I didn't know Joe Good was from San Francisco, by the way. <laughs> Learn something every day. <laughs> well, I thought Joe Good was from um, Oklahoma. Oh, it must be another Joe Good. Joe Good, uh, like he he lives. Um, here in like Venice area, um, and is good friends with uh, Ed Ruscha, and he he came up with Ed Ruscha. But I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's that so good that this person is talking about. But um, well, I also wanted to just kind of because this presentation was supposed to be what I was doing in this time of pandemic uh and sort of the the time that we're living in right now um this was kind of my expression um hashtag wtf um of what i saw during the unrest and the protests that were taking place out in the streets here in la i never thought i would see such a thing um, you know, uh, a corner, an intersection at Fairfax and Third by the Farmers Market. I don't know if you know if you're uh, familiar with that, Ksenia, that area. Um, I, was, I was always more on the west side. Or okay. Or in Eagle Rock. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, well, you know, uh, Third and Fairfax. That's like, like Hollywood. Okay. And, 
I had no, I, you know, I had never imagined that I would be um, witnessing on TV a cop car burnt to the ground, uh, straight tagged on and and burning, and you know, young people uh, like trouncing, uh, you know, getting up on the hood and, and on top of the car and like jumping up and down and um uh, it, it was like a it was an iconic moment i thought you know and uh all this profane language being spray painted on the on the cop cars and um I thought it was just crazy because I've been to the 92 riots here in LA and yeah, the businesses and the fires were really bad. They had burnt down and, and LA seemed like it was on fire. But I, you know, when they started in 2020, when they started attacking the authorities and the cops and all that, I was like, wow, this is like way off the handle, I thought. And um, were there actual palm trees on fire? Um, I think a couple had gone up on <laughs> fire. Okay. Well, during the LA uh, 92 riots, there were some palm trees on fire for sure. But, you know, this is uh, so I. And then, you know, you, you see all these youngsters, like I guess millennials that were like uh, t taking selfies in front of the, the burnt down cop car in the middle of the intersection. So this was like sort of my twist and portrayal and impres impression of the time we had lived through um, in 2020. And so I thought it would be kind of cool to, uh, reference a, a geisha taking a selfie of herself on a bus bench in LA uh, with the Hollywood sign behind her and in a palm tree burning. Um, and, well, I, I've um, heard 2020 described as a dumpster fire of a year more than once at this point. <laughs> More than once at this point, and I feel like this image kind of captures that sense. Of this is just the world is on fire. But um, on that happy note, <laughs> since we're a little bit over our time, um, you know, do you have any do do you have do you have any other people with questions or are you guys? No, I think Linda Linda clarified Linda Duke who had asked the early question. She clarified that Joe Good the painter is different from Joe Good the performance artist. So there are oh, two, I'm two sorry. different, yeah, I, I, two I, different I, Joe Goods. Okay. But I think no, I think we we're at we're at a good place in terms of um our questions coming to an end. And um I will say that, you know, for for the Elrich, the upside to how disruptive and disrupted 2020 has been has been doing the billboard project and it led us oh, wow. to to it led us to this opportunity to talk to artists who've done great work in our collection so it's just been such a pleasure and i think it has i'm certain it has been for our audiences as well so um thank you for taking the time to talk to us and oh no it's, it's my great pleasure i'm 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 grateful that you guys have had me on and um you know, uh, have been able to reconnect with my old painting out, out in, in the old rich. Um, and I hope that I, I can, uh, my images can be like a positive uplifting for, for the people out there in Wichita as well. And thank you so much. I, I appreciate you guys having me. Thank you. Thank you, Gajin. Thank you, Gajin. Great to meet you. Oh, nice meeting all of you. And, and thanks we'll for having keep me. Keep in touch. What's that? We'll keep in touch. Oh, yes, for sure. For yeah. sure. So does that, does that conclude everything? Like, all the people are off? <laughs> <laughs> nope, we're still, yeah. we still have but Jen is about to, I think Jen is about to hit stop, right? They're still here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I got to give a great big shout out and thank you to, to all the people who have joined on this uh, webinar.
And thank you. Thank you for tuning in. I it's been it. wonderful. Oh, one, one last note. I, I have to plug um, uh, in um, that, so, that self-portrait painting called Home Field LA will be featured in an upcoming show at the LA Louvre uh, called 45 at 45. Um, LA Louvre is turning 45 years old and they have chosen 45 artists um, uh, locally and internationally. And so this is uh, the announcement. And Beautiful. it's supposed to uh, open to the pub public, I think virtually, like on the 16th or the 17th of next month, and it'll run through um, next year till okay. January. And there's uh, appointment walk-ins as well. Um, and I'm sure you can, everybody can catch it on uh, virtual mode as well. So congratulations. Excuse me? Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's been a nice ride. Um, I, I just feel fortunate, you know, that I can, even amongst this sort of weird chaotic time here in the States and in the world that I can keep painting and keep working. Um, yeah. And what I love to do. Uh, and uh, my heart goes out to all those who have suffered and is suffering um, in our times right now. Um, and uh, I just feel very blessed. And so thank, thank you guys. Thanks, Kajin. Thank, thank you. you. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it off, everyone. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for joining us. Bye. Thank you. Here, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> See ya.